is there such thing as to explore the unknown? Is there such thing as knowing the unknown or being familiar with it? If you look at it uh, clearly, simply, the answer is obviously not. The unknown is where knowledge cannot enter. So when someone talk about knowing the unknown or understanding the unknown or being familiar with the unknown, the meaning is the concept of unknown. The name unknown with all the meaning that is associated with, which is knowledge. In the face of unknown, either one invent knowledge to escape the unknown, or one end and in the sense of trying to grasp to understand to comprehend to associate with to have anything to do with unknown all that ends So look at it, only not knowing can meet unknown and no other knowledge comes out of it. And this is the most avoided fact. because no one can come back and tell about it, including this ridiculous attempt here and now. So there is no intention to talk about the unknown. The talk is about the fake unknown, the unknown that can be known, that concept. And we can talk about something very similar, if not the same, which is death. People can talk about death. People can describe it as the end of everything. But they do not know death. Only death can meet itself fully without adding any movement of knowledge to it. So this unknown, this death, this ultimate void, this infinite question beyond words, what does it have to do with you, with your life? If at all, maybe ignoring it as you do is the meaning of your life. And from that comes out all the expressions, all the meanings, all the activities, all the experiences which you are so heavily invested. If that's the case, we reach the point of understanding. But if not, 
And if you dare to look truly into this self-avoidance, a different kind of observation may take place. An observation which is not of the known or trying to know. Observation that is not a confirmation to something you have as an idea. Rather an observation of not knowing. Surely such observation only expands. But where would it lead you? Obviously nowhere. And what did it give would it give you? Obviously nothing. So being so used to reason, being so transactional in your whole operation of the mind, in the mindset, this is not an option. This is not something you would seriously consider because it may demand the ultimate price, give everything to it, everything you know, and stay with nothing. And surely, if at all, there is not even a shadow of control that you can exercise upon that. So what do you do with this? Can you look at that, think about it, feel it, and meet the end of it? Drop the concept of it, the whole set of ideas, and stay with the truth of it, which is not knowing. To me, this is truth, not truth that can be explained or justified or measured against the false, but a living truth. There are no conflicts no complications, no contradictions in not knowing. Despite your biased intuition, not knowing is the most living, you can call it state, for you. Where that which ends is the artificial and that which begins teach you the truth about your nature and the truth about your nature is not known and only the unknown can meet that truth not by coming to it and have some kind of relation with it, but by realizing that the nature of unknown is the nature of itself.
and stay with it because it's the only thing that is living. The end is the only beginning. The death of the known is the only living knowledge. Surely no one can talk about it. Surely any attempt to do so, such as this, cannot be considered valuable to the knowing mind. But it may present a key to something which is not of the mind. And to touch that which is not of the mind in a childish way you can say it's what your heart longed for before time began. <laughs>